Hello and welcome to Overcoming Your Addiction to Pornography Addiction. I hope the resources you find here will be helpful in your journey. I want to tell you a little bit about my background so you know who you're listening to. Years ago, I was sitting in church one Sunday and I remember someone kind of proclaiming the evils of pornography and how addicting it was. And this is a common message in my faith and many other religions around the world. Typically, I nod along as I too have moral um, concerns with the porn industry. But for the first time that day, I wondered, what does the research actually say about porn? Was it in fact harmful to view? Does pornography destroy relationships? Was it actually addicting? It's one thing to believe pornography is bad from a religious or moral standpoint, but quite another to understand the psychological impacts of viewing sexual images. As a beginning clinical psychology graduate student, I decided I would see what the research had to say about porn. I was surprised how few research studies even existed. I could not find a single one that demonstrated that pornography was even an addiction. So I decided to do the research myself. My mentor was a renowned sex researcher from Indiana University, home of the Kinsey Institute, the Center for Sex Research. We created a study where we invited participants into the lab who had problems controlling their viewing of pornography. We monitored their brain activity as they viewed a variety of films, including ones with sexual images, to determine if their brain activity resembled the brains of those who were addicted to drugs like cocaine, heroin, or nicotine. I was confident we would be the first laboratory to find neurological evidence that pornography was an addiction, just like a drug. And I was wrong. It turns out the alpha brain patterns of individuals in our study looked nothing like the brains of individuals who were addicted to drugs. So what was going on? Our participants reported being sexually aroused while viewing the sexual films in the lab, but also reported feeling more distress, anxious, and guilty while viewing the sexual films than others who had less of a problem controlling their viewing. Although we did not find support for a neurological or addiction reason for unwanted pornography viewing, we found that emotions played a major role. Our first study made media headlines the moment it was published. Researchers disproved sex addiction, the headlines read. And that was actually not what we found. Not finding support for sex addiction and disproving sex addiction are two very different things. And they neglected our key finding on the role of emotions. But that's how the media portrays science. What I did not expect was the backlash we received from many of the sex addiction experts. Many counselors, politicians, and even members of my own faith believe in sex addiction. Sex addiction in many ways has become its own belief system. Any scientific evidence against sex addiction can feel threatening if it has become part of your belief system. After graduate school, I completed my year-long psychology residency at Brigham Young University's Counseling Center. It was at BYU where I began to apply what I had learned in the research lab to real individuals who were struggling with pornography. One of the most common concerns for students on the campus at BYU was unwanted pornography viewing. The Counseling Center offered several pornography groups each semester exclusively for helping students reduce their pornography. Even though the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints sponsors an addiction recovery program, the psychologists at BYU have been offering acceptance and commitment therapy, or ACT, groups for porn for almost two decades. The psychologists at the university share the same ethical responsibility I have to offer treatments that were based on sound psychological principles that are evidence-based and effective. No addiction approach for porn can make those claims. The only option was ACT, and it works. As a scientist, I was trained to be open-minded, curious, suspend judgment, investigate, and research before coming to a conclusion. After publishing several more research studies about porn and working with over a hundred clients with porn viewing concerns, the gap between religion and science became even more clear. I knew it was time to offer a way to reach even more individuals who desperately want help 
changing their compulsive pornography viewing. It's an incredible experience. Each and every time I've been able to witness someone who's been struggling with porn for decades, learn how to let go of their battle and begin to live their life more fully within a matter of weeks to a couple months. That level of dramatic change is possible. I've seen it time and time again. There is so much hope for you. I don't believe there is only one correct treatment for any problem. If addiction programs have worked for you, that's fantastic. If they haven't, try ACT. If ACT doesn't work for you, keep looking. Try something else. With each attempt to change, we grow, we learn, and we prepare ourselves for the next step. I don't claim to have all the answers. I won't guarantee you'll be pornography free by engaging in LAP, but I want you to know that I am committed to offering you the most up-to-date, evidence-based psychological therapy options we have for pornography. As a mental health professional, I owe you that. A final word, LAP is not the only way to receive help. There are clinicians across the country trained in ACT who can help you. There are also several inexpensive ACT self-help books out there, like I mentioned before, The Happiness Trap, Get Out of Your Mind and Into Your Life, you can find these online, and I've recommended them to many of my clients. What I really want for you is to find what works best for you. I've created LAP so you can work on your pornography concerns from the comfort of your own home. I've seen too many people suffer needlessly for too long because they don't know how to find the right help they need for pornography. I'm more interested in you receiving support than selling you on LAP. There's always hope. Even when it feels like you've tried everything and your pornography viewing only seems to get worse, the path forward might be just around the corner. You're likely a lot closer to finding the way out than you think. If all else fails, be kind to yourself. I promise you, you're doing the best you can at any given moment even if you, your life is not quite where you want it. There's always just a bit more work to do. Our lives are more like a piece of art than something we check off a to-do list. There's always more color to add to our canvas, more contours to enhance, and more meaning to make. I wish you all the best in your journey, and I hope that you find life after pornography helpful for you as you overcome your addiction to pornography addiction.